here we have the BIOS, the basic input output system pin out. As you can see here, this is basically eight pins. Always in the pin number eight of the BIOS, you should or you have to always find 3.3 volts without powering on the laptop. Okay. To know whether the voltage of the motherboard is good or not is to check the pin number 8 of the BIOS. If you find 3.3 volts, means automatically that all voltages in the motherboard are good. If you don't find 3.3 volt, means you have problem in somewhere with the voltages in the motherboard, including 3 volt, 5 volt, VCC core, uh, etc. Okay. Hi again. So welcome to part number six. So we have seen four parts and in or five parts until now. So for guys that doesn't watch the five parts, I invite you to watch the five parts until and then follow with me. So. We're gonna see in this part, part number six, basically we're gonna see how to check the serviceability of the ESIO or Super IO. Basically here we have the ESIO. So let me show you the ESIO. So here we have the BIOS. This is basically ESIO or Super IO, I see. We find always the Super IO in every computer or laptop motherboard. You know that this IC has a very important role or in the motherboards. It is the control, it controls the whole voltage in the motherboard. Without it, the motherboard cannot operate correctly. Okay, so we're gonna say in this part all about the super IO. So how to check whether the super IO is good or not? What about the here, as you can see the component around it, how you can use the ceramic capacitor to detect if the SIO is good or not. Of course, you, you're gonna find many, ty many types of SIO, okay? And of course, the super IO, you will find always the super IO near to the BIOS or to the ICH. So let's continue our course, okay? so. Of course, we're gonna see the SIO, and of course, we're gonna see how to check the BIOS. We're gonna discuss the BIOS uh, schematic or diagram. We're gonna see the pinout, okay, and its functions. And of course, I'm going to show you how to check motherboard ports and connectors because connectors, as I told you before in the previous lectures or previous parts, 50% about 50 or 40% of motherboard failed motherboard are due to connectors the connectors make short circuits okay so that's why you should always pay attention to connectors okay so let's see how to check the serviceability of the super io ic so as you know the super input output ic or is io and sometimes we call it kbc or keyboard controller why we call it keyboard controller easy because it controls the keyboard the touchpad etc okay so so it is responsible for the whole power in the motherboards. Okay, you can check the serviceability of the ESIO using many methods, but the two known methods are, as we have already seen, the first method and we have the second method. So for the first method, by checking the heat of the ESIO IC, if you feel that the IC is very hot while plugging the adapter, means it is failed. Of course, you're gonna use your finger to check the heat of this. Uh, of the, the, the SIO or if you have the thermal camera you can use the thermal camera okay so for the next or the second method we have is by checking the PF or ceramic capacitors around it around the IC if you find that any capacitor or basically more capacitors are shorted to the ground then means 100% the ESIO has shorted to the ground. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you here in this picture. 
So here, for example, we have the IC, okay, the super IO IC, and over here we have ceramic capacitors around it, okay. So if this IC is shorted, automatically you will find two or three capacitors here also are shorted to the ground. Why? Because these capacitors basically are connected to the ground in one side and to the IC in the other side. Do you see this path over here? Here, for example, for this capacitor, it is connected to IC here. As you can see, we have the path and to the ground in this side. This one also connected to super IO. As you can see, we have the path and this side, uh, this one and this side to the ground and so on. Okay, that's why when you find that many capacitors, ceramic capacitors around the is IO are shorted automatically 100% this IC is bad okay so let's continue how to check the BIOS now we gonna I'm going to show you how to check the BIOS basically the BIOS or basic input output system is another IC basically you're gonna find a BIOS with eight terminals okay so many motherboards contain this kind of bios of course there is many types of bios but this is the always you're gonna find this one that contain eight terminals as you can see so we're gonna see each terminal and its function so without the bios the computer cannot turn on Okay, cannot turn on because the BIOS contains inside it a program or a flash software that take the first step when you press the power button. So without it, the power or the motherboard or the laptop will be the laptop. So the BIOS or basic input output system is one of the most important ICs in the motherboard because it contains firmware or a program that, that is responsible for the post or power on self test. The post is the first operation that should be performed before downloading the operating system. So before downloading the operating system, operating system here is Windows 10, for example, Windows 7 or Windows uh, 8, etc. So the post is the first action that will be occurred before downloading this one. The post has as a purpose to check and make the self-test to the hardware parts before booting the computer. That's why if that firmware is corrupted, the post cannot be performed so the laptop will not work. To check the BIOS, you should first connect the power adapter to the power jack of the laptop and then check whether you have 3.3 volts, as you can see here in pin number 8. Of the BIOS without turning on the laptop. So to check whether the BIOS get the voltage, whether the voltages are good because the 3.3 volt for the BIOS is is the last voltage that is generated in the motherboards. So when the motherboard is not on or when the laptop is not on. So when you check and you find 3.3 volt in pin number eight, it means all voltages are good. But if you don't find this voltage, for example, you find here zero, means automatically that you have problem with the voltage. Obviously, you should check the three volt, five volt, always circuit, okay? So basically here we have the BIOS IC, we have eight pins over here, so the pin number one, as you can see here, we have here a table where we have the pin name, the input output, and the function. So for the pin one, we have here chip select input, okay? Pin two, this is the data output, as you can see. Pin number three, we have basically the right products input. And always the pin number four is connected to the ground. Of course, right products also. We have 3.3 volts, but this one, it's not generated in the first time. In pin number five, we have the data input. We have the clock about 1.5 volts. 
so the clock is about 1.5 volt if you want to check whether the clock is here or not you can just check 1.5 volt over here the holds here or input output and here we have the vcc as you can see okay 3.3 volts okay so let's move on directly to how to check motherboard ports and connectors so basically here this is one of the most important thing that i want to talk about is ports you know that as i told you before the ports a a I'm based on my experience. I fixed, I have fixed more than 2000 laptops. About 40 to 50 failures is due to parts or to plugs in the laptop. Okay? Because when, for example, you have a failed or a damaged port, like this one, for example, as you can see here, like this one. Do you see this one here? Or even this one here? We have pins connected together. Assume that, for example, this pin and this pin that are connected are the ground and the vases. Automatically, you will get a short circuit in your laptop. Means dead laptop. Automatically. So here we have one kind here as you can see of parts you see here this is basically the major parts okay here automatically 100 percent the laptop where this port is connected is shorted okay here we have another as you can see connector or plug okay here we have another here we have another it's uh, this is just example okay so <clears throat> which kind exactly of parts that we should pay attention to all kinds of ports all kinds including usb ports rg45 ports vga ports serial ports hdma ports e all ports rg25 and rg25 rg11 etc okay you should always when you get a motherboard a bad motherboard or a failed motherboard <coughs> the three mandatory steps that you should follow are first the three or four first check the external state of the laptop or the motherboards you get then you should do a visual inspection okay a visual inspection because using just a visual inspection you can detect the failed component it could be a mosfet an ic a port it could be anything in the motherboard so do not neglect the visual inspection then you should check the dc connector or power jack then check all ports of the motherboards unfortunately some technicians and even engineers they began with the multimeter they receive a bad motherboard they take the multimeter and began testing components no that's false that's wrong never began with the multimeter you should always use your eyes first your visual inspection and then after that if you didn't find anything anything wrong then you can move on to the next step so of course i'm going to teach you or to show you in the next videos how to follow the steps from getting the motherboard until resolving the problem so thank you very much guys for your attention this is basically the end of part six we're gonna see the part seven in the next video and f please don't forget to subscribe share the video and like the video if of course you find it a useful video for you and for guys that not yet subscribed you are very welcome in my channel where i will share with you my experience and more unique videos and of course for anyone who want to join me in the patreon page where i share a very unique content and of course i upload in a, in a daily basis laptop schematics etc you are very welcome and of course 
this article you will find the link of this article in the description box that you can read as you want thank you very much and see you tomorrow with part number seven